6.5 billion dollars worth of options are expiring today and the big question is is this something that we need to worry about or is everything fine and we will finally get a really nice pump that is something that we need to talk about here because there are some indications where we are heading to so make sure that you're subscribed to the channel like this video and activate the bell so you will never miss out on these really important updates and now let me show you what i found here today so when we're going here to velo data uh, the first thing that we need to look at is the open interest here so we have overall here on Deribit, you see that is the open interest that we need to talk about we have here right now almost 700 million dollars on Deribit in open interest and Deribit is an options trading platform so that is something uh, that we need to uh, have a look at overall the open interest sits at a total of five point uh, no sorry the total open interest is around 11 billion dollars right now so now over half of that is sitting in options that are expiring today so but it does not mean that um, all of that liquidity now will have an impact on on the price the option expiry usually leads to some volatility in the market and i can tell you there is some fighting going on right now in the bitcoin chart because if we close under $67,000, the bears would be favored in terms of the option expiry and above $69,000, uh, 69500 to be uh, exact, the bulls will be favored. So hence, they make money, short squeeze, um, massive pump, you know, so to um, catch as much liquidity as possible um, in the option expiry. The expiry itself will happen um, at... 12 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time or 4 p.m. Uh, London Time, depending where you are. So have a look around that time what's going to happen because I, I, from experience, know that it gets a little bit volatile around that, that hour. Right now, when we're looking at the 4-hourly chart on Bitcoin and the Bollinger Bands, uh, we see that here nothing really uh, is happening. We have some consolidation and the Bollinger Band is about to tightening up here a little bit. If I would extend it like this, you can see that the price action is currently sitting above the middle band, which is a bullish, uh, bullish indication um, for the Bitcoin price potentially to retest the top of the uh, Bollinger Band. And what we usually see when we get into the top section uh, of it, we stay there. Um, so if we stay there, we trend with it to the upside. So But price will proceed the Bollinger Band. So you see that, for example, here, you know, with that massive pump here, price uh, was going up first before the Bollinger Band was catching up to it. And that leads sometimes for candles breaking out of the Bollinger Band. But every single time, the price comes really quick back into it. Here we could potentially see in the next 36 hours something similar to be happening because I will show you in a moment uh, why we are that close for a massive, massive move in Bitcoin. Um, if you would have been following this channel uh, now for a couple of days, uh, you would have gotten yesterday a really nice uh, opportunity to enter our long trade setup here at $67,400 because we retested that. Um, yeah, and you would be up now $1,000 here roughly in, in profit already. But uh, again, a word of caution, as long as we're not breaking above $69,400, we need to be a little bit careful here with uh, taking positions. And personally, I'm not interested in taking any um, smaller cap altcoin positions right now while Bitcoin uh, is struggling uh, to move here above $69,000. One reason for that is also the monthly close that is happening today because we are at the end of May. Uh, so tonight we're going to get a monthly close. Uh, the stochastic RSI gave a sell signal here in March. Um, I think we can kind of ignore that uh, just due to the fact that uh, we potentially close here above, um, what is it, uh, $64,000 today. That is the level that we need to watch for the monthly candle close. Uh, because if we would do that, then we open a new candle above that level which is, again, another bullish another bullish part of the puzzle that we're going to see here, continuation to the upside and potentially finally leave that consolidation that we are in for now uh, the third month. And uh, yeah, so when we see something like this, 
technically we could see another month of consolidation, um, but it does not look like it. And you're going to understand in, in a second why when I move to, uh, to another chart here. So that, that is the really important level to watch here. And in terms of uh, breaking into higher levels, it is still the all-time high that we need to break here. You know, so we have here a downward sloping trend that we can see closer on lower time frames. So once that trend is broken, we should move in direction of a new all-time high here pretty, pretty soon. Um, also here on the daily chart, remember I gave you here that uh, Wyckoff accumulation uh, pattern. We are completely on track here uh, with things that are turning out, you know, so more or less. So if I draw here and put this up a little bit, uh, the only thing that we need to do is come here into our red box um, of $70,000 and then start consolidating within that box to get a break to the upside because that red box is the spring of the Wyckoff accumulation pattern. Now, when we go into some lower time frames here, which is still a higher time frame, you know, um, the 12 hourly chart still has here the downward sloping trend going on. Yesterday, we tried to break out of it. Uh, we failed uh, to do so. We only tapped back into that golden ratio that I'm preaching here for God knows how long already that uh, this is really important that we reclaim that level because that will open us up uh, to move here into a new all time high really, really quickly. Uh, uh, here, the really, really, really bullish uh, indication that I see here right now on the chart is that the stochastic is pointing to the upside. The RSI got a bounce from the 50% level, and we are seeing here selling pressure uh, fading away on the MACD. So, with the next 12 hourly close, we should get another lighter red candle, and then tomorrow we should finally get a green candle potentially, which will bring us back into that golden ratio and potentially even above that. Preferably, we would test the Monday high here around $70,700 and also get a monthly close around that level. That, that would be insane if we could close there, even though if we would then tomorrow on the 1st come back to the golden ratio to test this level back and then slowly come back above $70,000 and continue to go here to the upside. So just that you know, that is the scenario I'm looking at. But there are also other scenarios here. For example, on this daily chart, the symmetrical triangle uh, needs to get a breakout by today or tomorrow. So we need to see here a move above $69,000 approximately and get a candle close. Uh, if we fail to do so by tomorrow, expect that we start breaking to the downside a little bit. So, and here I have to show it to you guys, you know, so um, we need to be prepared for all scenarios. Here is a fair value gap, you know, down here that is not closed at $63,400 approximately. And there is another one um, way, way lower than that. $55,000 approximately is, is the lower end of that. So, and even lower than that is another one that I just spotted here and that is here we also never came back to close that one at forty five thousand seven hundred fifty dollars approximately so i'm not saying we have to come back down there but you should be aware that there are still footprints left in the chart uh, by institutional players that could lead to at some point that we come back down to these levels so does it have to happen now uh, with that symmetrical triangle breaking down no it doesn't have to um, already for the reason that we are about to get a buy signal uh, on the stochastic, the MACD is not really bearish here with these um, really, really slim uh, red candles here uh, that shows uh, that here's just some consolidation happening and the RSI is also more or less pointing to the upside and trending upside. So um, I'm not really worried about this yet, but I would get worried by Sunday uh, if on Sunday you see Bitcoin uh, still bouncing around here 68,500 to uh, 69,200 um, and basically moving sideways out of that uh, symmetrical triangle. So then I would start to get worried that we get potentially here flush to the downside because we are not able to break resistance um, above the $69,000 area. On the four hourly chart, things uh, looking here on this specific one a little bit better. Remember, I told you it was important to reclaim $68,300 uh, to see continuation here based on the broadening wedge breakout. Uh, the trajectory remains here to the upside for the time being as long as we are staying above that level. Uh, get a candle kind of close below that and a rejection. So something like, like this. Close below, come back up, retest, reject, go to the downside, 
get ready that, that we will retest uh, lower levels here um, in the short term. On the liquidation levels, we also see here a clear picture occurring right now. More and more people um, betting on that the option expiry will have a bullish outcome because we see here people... Um, coming in with over leveraged long positions and also with some smaller positions here just below the price, which is telling me that people try to long from here. Does that mean that we have to go to the upside? No, it doesn't have to mean that we go to the upside, but there are a huge amount of people leaning to the, uh, to the potential that we're going to the upside because uh, at current prices, um, the option expiry is favoring a bullish outcome. So if we push it a little bit higher, uh, we will trigger some uh, short liquidations uh, all the way uh, to like $71,000 here. And um, when we are going to the liquidation heat map, we will see a similar picture. Look at here, uh, $70,150 approximately. Once we are tapping into that uh, liquidity pocket, you're going to see a massive short squeeze into some higher levels here and you will um, already see a cascade of liquidations on the short side around the $69,400 level because uh, here is over the last 24 hours um, a lot of uh, short liquidity built um, yeah it was built up here uh, to the downside you see here exactly what, what I mean with a move to $66,000 if we uh, break down and we break under 68, then um, I would expect here a quick move to the downside. Again, for the time being, it does not look like it. Every indicator on the shorter timeframes to the higher timeframes is pointing to a move into higher prices uh, for the time being. But again, the uh, options expiry can mess around with that. You know, so as uh, as closer we get to the expiration um, hour, the more volatile Bitcoin could potentially get. So be aware of that. And guys, don't forget, if you want to uh, play in this volatile market, uh, then don't forget that you can trade on Bybit. You still get $30,000 absolutely for free for using the link below here. Or on Margex, you can trade without any KYC with, with the link mentioned here. And also, they have an airdrop that you can farm right now. Uh, simply by trading on Margex, the more you trade, the more you're eligible for an airdrop. So um, go and check this out. And on Blowfin, on Blowfin, there is currently, uh, let me pull this up here, is currently a deposit um, bonus ongoing of $300. You don't actually need a lot of money to, to claim the $300 like on other exchanges, you know, where it's like super crazy um, amounts that you need to deposit. You need $2,000 to claim $300 uh, worth of a bonus, you know, so that's amazing. Uh, even with $1,000, you get $150 and $575. Uh, dollars. Um, that is uh, a really, really good um, bonus that, that you get here basically for free for just depositing some money there, you know. So who doesn't have $500? It's it's not a lot, you know. You deposit it, you, you take your bonus, you um, withdraw the $500 and run away again, you know. Um, so and now imagine with a $300 bonus, if you take um, a trade with 10x leverage, that's $3,000 $3, position absolutely for free, you know. So you um, the coin moves 10%, you made $3,000 out of $300 that you got for free, you know, so you uh, make sure that you also check this out. So and other exchanges are also in the link uh, in the comment below. Check everything out in the pinned comment and in the description of this video. So now let's talk about really quick about the USDT dominance. The USDT dominance is getting rejected as expected from the 4.5% level. Now we only need to get here some follow through. I hope that the volatility uh, around the option expiry will bring us a further decline uh, back to let's say 4.4, so 0.1 decline, uh, because that will bring Bitcoin potentially really, really close to the $70,000 mark or even above the $70,000 mark. So that's what I'm looking for here. A break above the 4.5% level and we start to get in trouble. On Ethereum, we also see on the Ethereum Bitcoin chart, finally a nice bounce here back to the upside. Remember, I set the line in the sand is the 0.054 uh, Bitcoin level. Um, and now we get a bounce already from 0.0545, um, uh, which is amazing. Now. Here, what we want to see right now is a break above the 0 0.056 um, resistance. And once we are doing that, uh, Ethereum 
is finally ready to move here to the uh, 0.06 level, which will be then re be reflected in the Bitcoin, uh, uh, sorry, in the Ethereum price being above um, $4,000. So you see here also that strong candle um, on the four hourly chart for Ethereum pushing it to the upside. Uh, for now, the, the above level is resistance. But from the indicators, uh, we see here strong momentum in Ethereum, uh, which should get us back here into the $3,800, $3,900 level. Uh, the $3,900 level remains a strong resistance. Let, uh, once we are getting there, two four-hourly candles closed above the $3,900 level, expect that we are going to break $4,000 and will continue to move in direction of a new autumn high for Ethereum. Until then... We are trading here also in a, in a range for Ethereum. Let me mark this out. So that is kind of the trading range for Ethereum right now that we are looking at. So the trading range uh, comes uh, in here from 3,620 all the way up to 3,970. That's a almost, yeah, it's a little bit more than 10%, roughly 10% of a trading range. Um, that, that we are respecting here. So if you don't count the wicks, then it's a little bit more narrow. And also, you know, if you only take candle closes, then this here would be the most accurate representation um, of the range here right now, kind of like this here. So and that would give you a range of 3,700 to 3,920 approximately, uh, roughly a 7-8% uh, range that Ethereum is trading in. So here we are uh, breaking now yeah, or we're trying to break back above the mid-range. Once we are doing that here above $3,800 um, with a four-hourly candle close above that level, uh, we definitely uh, enter here super bullish territory for Ethereum with a potential retest of $3,900. And like I said, then continuation to the upside. Then Solana, I wanted to show you, where was that? Where's my other Solana chart? Here. Uh, Solana is still within the golden ratio, but also looking like uh, to preparing for a move to the upside here on the daily chart, uh, because again, Stochastic is getting ready to print a buy signal for us. Uh, the RSI is pointing to the upside. The MACD prints really small uh, dark red candles here, uh, which is just, again, a representation of some consolidation in the uh, Solana price. And as soon as we are breaking here, this downward sloping trend, uh, let me make this here a proper line, uh, we should get some fireworks for Solana. And again, in that golden ratio is a good moment to open a position. Uh, if you just uh, want to play it a little bit safer, wait for a confirmation here of that break of this downward sloping trend line um, at the 179 dollar level more or less We're not far away from that right now we are less than a percent away from that here if you want to play it safe wait for um, either a break above that level today um, or tomorrow and then you can open a position here if you are a little bit more on the risky side you can open now a position just put your stop loss at the 155 dollar mark approximately so if you want to measure that it's like a five percent move uh, 155 is um, seven percent move to the downside. So uh, now you have to understand this would be a swing position that is not a short-term trade, you know, with such a stop loss. Uh, so I would not recommend that you leverage there with 10x leverage. You know, you have to use way lower leverage, like three, four, five x leverage maximum, you know, so and you can trade this then into the $200 uh, dollar mark or the $256 uh, dollar mark. So in terms of return, uh, th this amazing return, you know, even with um, a five X leverage trade here over 250% and with um, a move into the $200 level, it's also a 100% move, you know, so uh, that is um, a really, really good risk to reward ratio um, here on that uh, Solana trade. And guys, that's it already for today. I wanted to make it a really quick update. Uh, again, watch the auctions expiry. Uh, we need to be aware of that uh, because we could get a really nice breakout. Indicators are in alignment for a breakout to the upside. Uh, let's just hope that um, the auctions expiry is not messing around with that. Thank you so much for tuning in again. Don't forget, smash up the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you then again tomorrow.